Deb Garland. I'm the chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. Today we're here with, I'd like to introduce Jim Pereira. He is my co-host and also our vice chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. On my left is State Representative Michelle Dubois. Hi, Deb. Hi, how Hi, are you? Thank Hello. you for How's letting me be here with you. Most certainly. And you're up for uh, re-election. Well, you're running for, uh, for re-election as I well I am running for re-election. Thank Very you. Excited. Yes, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about it. Great, great. So why don't we go into the questions? Deb, you want to lead off with the first Sure. So, Michelle, my first question would be, how long have you been a public servant? Well, you know, that's really interesting, right? So, I, and I like the way you phrase it, because that's really what I consider my work, is public yeah. service. And um, I'm in my fourth year of a, as being a state representative, and before that, I was a city councilor in Brockton for Ward 6 for 10 years. And really, before that, it was more like community public service, where I was helping stop a trash transfer station that wanted to come into our community. Um, and then... I guess I would say those were the official ones that would fit in like a textbook, but growing up, um, the idea of volunteerism and caring about others and being a responsible citizen was always really important in my household. So I took part in a multitude of volunteer activities in Brockton um, before that. You've done a lot of work here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and um, and actually talking about that, and I, I just to, for people to get an understanding, you know, of more where you came from and uh, what you did before uh, public servitude is. Uh, what was your major at uh, MCLA? I believe that's where you went. Great. To college so yeah, so when I started, it was North Anna State because I'm right. old, and then it changed to Mass <laughs> College of Liberal Arts, and um, it's an interesting story because going to Brockton High and right. graduating from Brockton High in '91, mm -hmm. being such a big school right at the dire part of uh, school funding crisis, right. Right. Um, and then going to North Anna State and and seeing the difference in the small school structure was very good for me. I was a real quiet kid and it enabled me to come out of my shell. But um, being the first person to go off to college um, in my family, I didn't really, I, you know, I found my college, I applied for my college, I applied for the financial aid, I paid for it, I figured out everything on my own, which a lot of people from this community do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, I have a philosophy degree, liberal arts degree with a major in philosophy, um, social activism um, and uh, social um, studies of that sort is what I really focused on in college. And it has served me in some ways. Ways. I'll tell you, when I talk to young people mm -hmm. now that are the first ones going off to college, right. I advise business. I really do, yes. and I think I wish I did, but I did it. Right. And I'm doing good, and I'm, I, it was a really good experience for me. Good, mm -hmm. good. Thank you good. for that. Mm -hmm. um, you've had some accomplishments this past years. Um, what would you focus on and continue to build on in the future? Well, you know, it's interesting because when I first... Having been a city councilor for 10 years, I always heard, we heard about a lot of budget crisis and we always knew that the schools were underfunded in unfair yes. ways. So I know when I was on the city council, we always would allocate extra money from some savings account or line item to help close those gaps. Mm -hmm. And as the um, number of years of underfunding added up, um, and I moved on to be a state rep, and it sometimes became impossible, I guess, at the city level to do that, and there were layoffs. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I knew that this year, I had, when I first got in, I filed a bill, and I filed it again in my second term, to close a transient student funding um, gap problem that causes Brockton to get $2 million less every single year on average than it should. There's yeah. much more owed to the city of Brockton with education, but that's just one little um, discrete area. And um, I'm still hoping to get that fixed. But next, next session, the work that we've done in these last two terms to really highlight the injustice in urban school education and really all school education um, causes me to really believe that we're going to pass the Foundation Budget Formula Review Commission's four areas to correct the um, school budget problems. Okay. And one is about the, the amount that we underfund for um, teacher, um, salary, um, teacher uh, retirement and health care. Mm -hmm. The next is the amount that it costs to educate a child with English as a second language. Wow. Yes. Low-income kids that see a lot of uh, violence in their communities and maybe don't have the supports that they 
really should or even that their parents would want for them that need a little extra help. And um, kids with special education needs, all these areas through a lot of analysis has been found to be underfunded. So in Brockton, we'd benefit from all four areas being fixed. Right. In West right. Bridgewater and East Bridgewater, they would benefit from two. So we're looking at the whole state. It's something like $2 billion we're underfunding our public education system. So my focus, my number one focus is going to be fixing that education funding formula next year so our kids don't have to suffer with it anymore. And, and that's something we really need here in the city of oh, yeah. Brockton. Agreed. We're very underfunded. Right. Um, <coughs> so our next question would, uh, uh, we'd ask you, what, what do you want the voters to know about you? Yeah. You know, thank you for asking that. Uh, I hope that the folks in Brockton might already know me, but if they don't, I hope that they know that I'm an advocate for them. I'm an advocate for the person that, you know, I'm a fifth generation Brocktonian. My parents really struggled, immigrant, immigrant grandparents and great grandparents. Life has never been easy for any of us, mm -hmm. but we all have come together around this idea that we love each other and we're not valued by the amount of money we make or um, what kind of car we drive. We're really valued by the amount of care we give to one another and ourselves in um, really protecting our environment and our relationships. So um, being from Brockton has been um, a big help for me to be able to be a really good state representative. It's been a focus. Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Thank you for answering. And so, I'm sorry, so being from Brockton has been a focus and I think that they should know that I've served them for 10 years on the city council. I was a 10 year Ward 6 city councilor mm -hmm. fighting, holding the line against um, greedy developers. We mm -hmm. really pushed single family home development in areas mm -hmm. that there were already a lot of multifamily homes and yes. where it was appropriate some multifamily homes. Um, I was on the, on the group that helped get the um, veteran housing um, on um, North Main North Street. Main. Right. I, I really pushed for that even though some people were worried about it because in the end when it was built even mm -hmm. those people that were worried about it like it. Right. I was one of those people. Right, but you know you don't always but, know. But in the end when I went and visited the development I saw that what it was going to bring for the future of the veterans it, it was a plus. Right, and sometimes the, the propaganda on the street that is any normal person can believe mm -hmm. isn't actually equal to what is happening and it's you know everybody right. is, sus is suspicious because <coughs> there have been so many times in the city of Brockton mm -hmm. where we have been taken advantage of yes mm -hmm. and that's another thing I'd like the people at home to know that I can see a flim flam scam and I am on their side to make sure that we don't get exploited our tax dollars don't get exploited to some corporate rent seeking scam ever right. again I was not involved with any of them, I was, you know, not in elected office yet, Definitely. and I've really sought to try to stop them when I've seen them. Good, good, thank you. Um, what challenges do you think you face in the election, and how will you overcome them? You know, a biggest challenge is some of um, for the last two years. There's been this um, alt right, super far right, not a normal. Republican, but like the super far right group that's mm -hmm. funded by dark national money that has been infusing Brockton with hate mail about me. They did six negative mailers. Most of them were like, well, all of it was lies and skewing of the truth and really nasty mailings. So some of my um, effort and challenge in this election, because it came up uh, um, a second part that's difficult for me in this election is that it started only after the primary because my opponent got a per, got people to write in his name on the primary ballot mm -hmm. and that allowed him to jump into the general election so if anybody out there wants to volunteer for me I would love to have volunteers <laughs> and you can check out my website at www.repmichelledubois.com Calm or call my cell phone, 774-274-1344. So just gearing up and getting the word out and making sure I can knock on those doors and let the people know that the lies that are being perpetrated about me are just that. And if you look at my record of fighting for the residents to try to stop the power plant because of the asthma, Brockton has the fifth highest asthma hospitalization rate mm -hmm. for kids That's in the important. state. Yep. You know, closing down the, really pressuring the city and the state to close down Brockton's um, 
um, sewer, wa sewer waste incinerator. We were literally burning our poop over our heads. Eight tons of toxic, toxic wow. particles a year yes. mm -hmm. that our, us and our kids breathed in is no longer going to happen because that incinerator has been closed down. That's been um, like a 10-year effort. And so there's a lot of good. And, um, and so just getting that word out is a challenge. Well, thank Great. you for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so we want to know, uh, what, what is your favorite thing about being a rep? And uh, what you can follow up, but what are the toughest things about being a rep? You know, my favorite thing are the people. And mm -hmm. um, like I said before, I'm really from a grassroots, working class. You know, my parents really struggled to own our little house on the Andover Street and give us a backyard where we could be safe during right. our youth and our growing up years. It was not easy. And so being able to help families that were just like mine and just like mine now when they face struggles and op you know, problems. I like to tell people when I'm helping them, you know, um, your opposition, maybe it's um, whoever, they can afford usually to get a lawyer and have lobbyists that fight for them. And really, you might only be able to have me. So I'm here mm -hmm. for you. I'm here mm -hmm. to use this title that I'm so honored to have that you gave to me to um, work it to help you and your family solve problems, be it like stop their house from being foreclosed. I helped a lady do that. That was so rewarding. Right. You know, helping a woman who had been trapped in a house for four months because the insurance company wouldn't pay for her lift and it's really something they should have paid for so when I can really help people that's the best the most challenging um, is you know here when I was a city councilor we really uh, worked as a team us uh, city councilors and the mayors at the time and I've seen a shift um, not just at the local level because I'm still buddies with you know so many of the local officials work very well together but more at the state level and um, the nasty politics mm -hmm between uh, that are so partisan right. and it's like Democrat versus Republican and right. not we're all on the same team to make our community better and why don't we focus on how we can work together there's a lot of backbiting that you've got to deal with and so that's a little difficult but I'm doing fine with it right. and I think anybody in this position would see that tr too but really the people that I can serve and that I represent and making sure that they are being respected right. is really the best part all right, thank you for that. That thank was really you. great, you. really put. Um, so, and that kind of leads on to what do you, what do you think are your relationships with the uh, community and the local officials, and uh, how can that uh, be improved uh, on in regards to uh, leadership? Oh, great. So um, my first time out, I had every single city councilor's endorsement. Um, nice. I'm just I'm just seeking endorsements now, but right. I'm pretty sure it's going to be similar. My whole okay. delegation supports me, the representatives right. from Brockton. Um, I've worked very closely with them, mm -hmm. and uh, being a city councilor for 10 years really taught me that you have... I love all them. They're wonderful. Um, but it's taught me that even if there's sometimes you disagree with mm -hmm. someone else that's right. representing right. the district, mm -hmm. that you have to find a way to work with them. Right. And so um, I haven't really experienced much opposition um, or any problems like that but I'm, I'm willing to, to deal with it if it, if it ever arises and you really have to talk candidly right. with your with your colleagues in elected government and just with your with the citizens you represent mm -hmm. to make sure that um, they understand where you're coming from and they have the space to explain to you th their position and help you change your mind if it's needed right. so I'm open to all that um, I'm really enjoying it okay I appreciate you answering that question very uh, Thank well put, you. definitely. Um, <laughs> do you have any other questions you may want to ask now? Well, our time is ending. Oh, I'd like to thank you for sure, so for much sure. for coming and uh, having this conversation with us and to let uh, our viewers know that we have an election coming up in 20 days. Just about, yeah. And to, we'd like to say get out and vote and make sure you look at Michelle Dubois's um, website, which is um, www.repmichelledubois, -E <clears throat> R-E-P-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-D-U-B-O-I-S dot com. And I, I think, I don't know if I get to say this, but I just would like people to know, and I forgot to put this in, that this district has 40,000 people in it, mm -hmm. and yes. 30,000 of us live in Brockton. I live in Brockton, you guys live in Brockton, yes. I grew mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. um, and 7,000 of us live in West Bridgewater, and four you know, 4,000, 3,500 live in East Bridgewater. And we really need to make sure that this seat is represented by someone that understands the struggles and the needs of our urban city, which is really 30,000 30, yeah. of the 40,000 people. It is. For sure, definitely. 
Again, thank you for uh, coming thank on the you. show with us. And uh, get out and vote. For sure, more certainly. <laughs> this is all the time we have. Till next time. Till next thank time. You. Goodbye.